now in class 11 i am studying a new chapter called the uniform circular motion chapter number 5 uniform circular motion what i have written here this is not class 11 need 2022 because in need exam all the concepts are taken uh, right from very basic knowledge so you must have the basic one of this uh, of the every topic taught in the physics so the all the videos that i have made that are all concerned with the need 2022 and also to the class 11 and 12 So first I take here the angular displacement displacement. the angle subtended at any interval of time by a particle moving subtended at the center at any time interval by a body moving in a circular path is called angular displacement the angle is subtended at the center at any time interval by a body moving in a circular path is called angular displacement suppose this is the circular path this is a circular path this is now suppose center o initially suppose the particle is at this time this is now suppose t1 the particle is moving in this way anti clockwise and at another time this reaches to this point p2 this is now point p2 then what other angle is made by this one this is called the angular displacement <coughs> so you see that when the particle moving in a circular uh, path then it is at point p1 then at the point p2 in this interval it makes an angle delta theta at the center of the circular path then whatever this angle that is the angular displacement and you can see that this is uh, the point p1 and p2 is in an arc of this circular path so we have this angle equal to arc upon radius let this radius is equal to r this is no radius let <coughs> a body moving 
circular path. of radius r makes an angle delta theta while while moving from point P1 to P2. P1 to P2. Angle equal to angle equal to R upon radius. This we know. This we know. Right from the ninth class that angle is equal to R upon radius. R is P1, P2. This is now your P1, P2. Radius, this is now suppose OP1 or OP2. This is angle delta theta. So P1, P2 is what? Delta theta. This is now equal to delta S. Upon R, where this P1, P2 is equal to delta S. The distance, the R, the length of this R. So this is equal to so much. And if you want to write up, to write in this in the form of a uh, vector. Form of vector. Then this we can write this delta theta is equal to delta s upon Delta S is what? This is actually the uh, linear displacement. R is what the linear displacement. And this is now your R, the radius. So this is not so much. And you can see the unit of this one. Unit is radian. Certainly it is RAD, radian. And uh, also this is measured in when this, we say this is the SI unit of this one. SI unit. SI unit of this <coughs> delta theta. And you can write down the dimensional formula. Dimensional formula. This is equal to M0, L0, and T0. Because this is a pure ratio of the two lengths. So this is a dimensionless quantity, delta theta. And now we can have the different values of delta theta. You can see from this formula that the value of delta theta is never zero when the particle is moving in a circular path. So even there is one cycle of rotation, this uh, delta theta is not zero. This is very unlike to that the linear displacement. The, if the body returns to its uh, uh, original position, the linear displacement will be zero. But this angular displacement will not be equal to zero. It has always the value because this is the angle. So we have this. So now you can have that <coughs> as I told you that the particle is moving in the circular path. This is now a center O, this is now radius R, the particle is moving like this. This is now suppose point A. This is uh, now suppose uh, this is now point B. Then A to B, A to B, and then B to A. What we have?
this is the so much this is our radius this is our radius r then what we have this is a uh, suppose if point this is now point p this is now suppose point q then in going from a p b a p b what we have this delta s is equal to pi r this is half of the circumference on this side or on this side so therefore delta theta is equal to pi r upon r so this is equal to pi radian pi radian this is now what the delta theta if we take a one complete rotation one complete rotation then what we have this delta s is equal to 2 pi r therefore this delta theta is equal to 2 pi r to r so this r will cancel so this delta theta is equal to 2 pi radian this is the angular displacement in one rotation if suppose there are n rotations for n rotations delta theta is equal to 2 pi n so this is what l is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 1 So this is the even odd uh, even multiple of pi, even multiple of pi. So when this is like two, four, six, and so on like this, so delta theta is equal to pi into two n. So this is pi into even multiple. So much. So if we are given the number of rotations of this, suppose one rotation is in pi, two pi, two rotations, four pi, six, uh, three rotations, six pi, uh, four rotations is not eight pi. So this value delta theta increases as the number of rotations increases. So the value of angular displacement is never zero. It has always some value when the body is moving in circular path. Now when we say the uniform circular motion, then here we concerned with that the magnitude of the speed does not change. So when the speed is the uniform, in it is called, does not change, then we are having this uniform circular motion. So this is about the uh, uniform, this uh, the angular displacement, and now I will tell you the angular velocity. Angular velocity. Angular velocity. The rate. Of change of the angular displacement is called angular velocity denoted. by 
This is the W called the omega. Omega. So what we have? That this angular velocity. Omega equal to change in angular displacement. change in time change in time so this omega equal to delta theta upon delta t we apply it back so this is the average angular velocity so if delta t tends to zero What is still in this angular velocity? This omega limit tends to zero. This is equal to I delta theta upon delta t. So what we have? This omega is equal to d theta. Upon d t. This is like this. So this is the average angular velocity. It is average angular velocity. So now we can have <coughs> that uh, its unit. It is expressed in radian per second. And the dimensional formula, if you see, dimensional formula. This is equal to m zero l zero t minus one. So dimensional formula it is equivalent to the frequency. So this is what have the dimensions of frequency. It is dimensions of frequency. So what we have just to uh, this delta theta, as you know, for one complete cycle, one complete cycle, this omega is equal to two pi upon t. T is the time period. T. Time period. So this omega two pi two n. This omega is equal to also this now two pi n. This is now one like formula. N is equal to one upon t. This is what the rotations, one rotation, two rotation, three rotation, etc. So it has the frequency. This is what the frequency. This is not frequency. So you can express this one in this way also that uh, this omega is equal to two pi m and omega is equal to two pi m t, and you can see that value of this the direction of this omega is a vector quantity. Angular velocity is vector quantity. Quantity. So vector quantity. 
इसकी डायरेक्शन क्या होगी इट इज ऑलवेज अलॉन्ग द एक्सेस ऑफ रोटेशन velocity and linear 
minus two. So when the particle executes the circular motion, it has both kind of motion. One is the angular motion and second the linear motion. Because the circular path can be divided into a number of small segments which are a straight line. So you can say that circular motion is composed of this uh, linear motion. The circular motion is composed of linear motion. So what we have this omega angular velocity omega is equal to delta theta upon delta t but delta theta is equal to delta s upon r. So this we write down in this way. Therefore omega is equal to delta s upon delta t into r. So what we have omega equal to v upon r. We have v is equal to delta s upon delta t. This is the linear velocity. Linear velocity. Or we have this v equal to r omega. So when we are suppose we are having a big body which is rotating about some axis, then all the particles of the body will have the same angular velocity, but their linear velocity will be different. Suppose this is an axis of rotation, and this is a body which is being rotated about this axis then we are having different particles this is now like this then what we have this is now suppose R1 this is now R2 this is now R3 this is now R4 this is now R5 and so when this is being rotated with the angular speed omega so for a body moving about given axis the angular velocity of all particles of the body will be same but their linear velocities will be different will be different so what we have come here from this question, what can we have? This is now suppose the particle P1, this is now particle P2, this is now particle P3, this is now particle P4, this is now particle P5. So what we have? This is now B1 is equal to R1 omega, B2 is equal to R2 omega, B3 equal to R3 omega, and so on. So, so all the particles will have the same angular velocity, but their linear velocities will be different. So we can also write this into the terms of the vector terms because this omega and this 
R and this V. What are the vector quantities? So we can write it in the form of uh, vector. Order. In vector form, what we have is V is equal to omega cross R. Omega cross R. So you can see from here that how to tend to this one. Suppose we are having this circular motion. This is now circle. This is now your center, and this is now your R. This is now R. This sonus is R. This is not so much, and this is what center. This we have this number of R, and this is our axis of rotation. This is axis of rotation. This is being rotated in this way. This is equal to omega. Then what about V? This V, V is in this way. This is not V. This is not V. So this relation holds according to the Uh, cross product, and you can see from here also that if this omega cross r is maximum when all these are mutually perpendicular to each other, so this omega, this v, is perpendicular to the plane containing this omega and r. Also, 
when I got, uh, I think this is also given uh, in the chapter of rigid motion, uh, the motion of uh, of the rigid particle, rigid bodies. So I think this will be given there. But also you remember that whenever we are having the circular motion, there is a relationship between the linear velocity and the angular velocity. So this is about the angular displacement and the angular velocity. Thank you.